NASA's first ever mission to collect space dust from an asteroid and then bring it back to Earth landed successfully in the Utah desert over the weekend. Touchdown. I repeat, EDL. FRC has touchdown. That reaction says it all. So what happens next? Well, there are very eager scientists all over the world waiting to get a close-up look at whatever is inside. Samples will be in a special custom-built clean room. The samples themselves will be inside of a of a nitrogen-filled glove box. And then instead of that, they'll be stored in separate containers for allocation. The first samples will come out for the science team to uh, describe what we've seen and produce a catalog uh, within six months so that uh, researchers around the world can write their own proposals. And astrophysicist Jana Levin joins us now. Hi there, Jana. Uh, Hi. I'm not sure if you could see me here, but um, if you can, we have been geeking out all day. And by we, I mean uh, our smartest producer, Madeline. She built this little origami set <laughs> from the Internet. It is Osiris Rex right here. And, and Jana, I just want to make sure I understand this correctly, because I don't know if people at home truly appreciate what humans just did. But this Osiris just went out into space. Mm -hmm. And then this is the little capsule right here underneath. And then it just lowered this vacuum suction thing onto an asteroid, sucked up a bunch of dirt like a Hoover vacuum, put it in this. <gasps> then this guy flew back over us on Earth, dropped this little thing off, parachuted into Utah, and then took off again. Is that, right? Is that about right? Yeah, that's pretty great. It, in fact, it didn't even really land on the asteroid. It was just supposed to touch and go. And when they got there, wow. they, they realized that it was more unstable than they had had imagined that the asteroid had larger boulders than they had imagined, and it was spewing some of its regolith, which is like the dust and the rocks, into space. They were worried about it damaging um, Osiris. So Osiris did a lot of maneuvers way back in 2020 just to be able to get that sample. And when it did, when it dropped that robotic arm that you're talking about, they thought it would, like a pogo stick, bounce back because the surface was supposed to be hard, but it wasn't. It was just totally supple. It just... <laughs> crumbled underneath them. So they were lucky to get back out again and not, like, fall into a sinkhole. Um, so the whole operation was really quite amazing and definitely not without its problems. And it, it, really, uh, yeah. it really overcame all of them. And that is incredible. That sounds yeah. like the way that I vacuum my living room with, like, my <laughs> daughter's magnet tiles everywhere and just, uh, you know, a picking and scooping. Um, I, I mean, this seems like opening a time capsule to the, mm -hmm. the very beginnings of our solar system yeah. with, the, you know, the, the dust on an asteroid, not, you know, something that we normally see under our atmosphere and, and those types of conditions. What do you think these samples are going to tell us? Well, it, it is incredible because a lot of the samples that do get here are contaminated. They're contaminated just because of the journey that they made to get to Earth. Through the atmosphere, they're ablated, they suffer all kinds of weathering and erosion, and then they're contaminated when they get here. This is pristine. This is material that we think is pretty similar to uh, four and a half billion years ago when the solar system formed. and um, And so they have these kinds of secrets trapped in them about what the elements were like, what the chemical and physical composition was of that earliest era of our solar system. And we don't have any access to that otherwise. So what we're hoping to find out is, are there the building blocks for life, amino acids? There's no expectation that there's bacteria or microbes or viruses. And so um, it's safe in that sense, but you can see how they're approaching it with great care and great concern, not so much because they're concerned the asteroid's going to contaminate us, but because we're going to contaminate the asteroid. Uh, that is very comforting because I've seen way too many movies where it's yes. like all of a sudden a germ from outer space starts spreading uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the way you described it. It almost sounds like a, a dustpan with a heat shield underneath it so we yeah. can get it in its pristine condition. Uh, I know NASA has been saying that some of the contents that we're studying, uh, they're going to put some of it aside to preserve it for future generations. Why? 
I love that. That's so beautiful. When we look at some of the samples that were sent back from the moon 50 years ago, more, um, we did not realize that there was water sealed in some of those moon rocks. I mean, there were experiments we, we hadn't thought of. There are scientists that weren't born when Apollo sent back uh, moon rocks who study them now. And so with that very forward looking and, and that lesson from history, uh, these NASA scientists have thought I, there might be scientists not yet born who will understand mm. things we don't yet and will come up with experiments that we haven't thought of to test these rocks. It's really quite a, a beautiful kind of continuity to the future. Yeah, I'm going to be taking this home and playing with my kids with this thing. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go get so one. Now, I, I mean, this, this thing is so cool, but I have so many questions just by looking at it. First off, I know this thing, uh, Osiris, is headed off to its next mission. Uh, yes. It's going to collect more samples. Is that right? Because I see the capsule here, and I don't look. This is origami, so I'm not mm -hmm. sure <laughs> if this is completely accurate. But uh, So the capsule is gone, uh, mm -hmm. and then I'm like looking for the thrusters, looking for the propulsion system to get it to where it's going. Does it come back to Earth? What's next? I, I, it's not going to send another capsule back, uh, but it will be able to study another satellite, Apophis. I, I actually don't even know if I'm saying that properly. My Greek god <laughs> mythology knowledge isn't what it used to be. Um, I believe Apophis was a serpent god of the evil underworld, and that's because they were afraid that that particular asteroid was going to crash into the Earth. But it will be able to take very close pictures, kick up some debris and study it, and, and send us that information. Uh, quite the twofer we got from NASA yes. on this one. Jana Levin, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.